Good morning, Carol. Will you please stand and sing the call to worship number 2074? It should be printed up here. Will you please join with me in the opening prayer as printed in your bulletin? Lord, offer us such faith that when we start sinking under the weight of doubt and uncertainty, that you will reach out your mighty hand and lift us up. Forgive us for thinking we can manage our lives on our own. Empower us to, with the joy of faith, grab onto your hand and never let go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now if those may remain standing and sing hymn number 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
joy to be in God's house this day. It's a joy to celebrate God in our midst. It's a joy to be in mission and ministry in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We gather here this morning to give thanks to God for the blessings of our day, the blessings of friends, family, uh, church, and the call of faith. Are there other joys or concerns of the church here this morning? I'd like prayers for my cousin's son-in-law, young man, young father. He has been diagnosed with bone cancer in his arm, and he's in the hospital with complications. And his name? Kevin Scriber. Prayers for Kevin. Are there others? Please pray for Joyce. She's not here this morning. She's in bed with back pain for the last week and a half. She's going to see two doctors this week, and... Hope she can get some relief from the upper back pain. Prayers for Joyce Reinhardt, and also from Joyce, uh, prayers for Pauline Wallace, a 92-year-old friend who fell and has a neck fracture. Uh, prayers for Suzanne and Tim. For Suzanne and Ken. Uh, prayers and uh, just prayers for my coworker and friend Sandor, S A N D O R. Uh, he passed away this week uh, of a lung infection. So prayers for his friends and family. And that's Fred. Sandor. Sandor. Thank you. Uh, I'd like prayers for my daughters, two of, two of my daughters in uh, Arizona, Karen and Wendy. They both have not good diseases. And I would like to praise God for being good all the time. All the time. God is good. All the time. Prayers for Karen and Wendy. Anyone else? Let us then bow our heads and lift our hearts. Lord God, as we gather by your river here this morning, the river of your never-failing love and grace and power, Lord, we gather here this day to give you thanks and praise for the blessings of our day, the blessings of new beginnings, the blessings, Lord, of doing mission and ministry in your name, the blessings of our friends, our family, this incredible world that you have uh, offered to us, Lord God. We give you thanks and praise. Lord God, as we, we gather here this day, there are many times that we acknowledge that, man, we just, uh, we don't do the things we ought to be doing, Lord God, and, and we do pray your forgiveness for those things and the things that we, we say that might be a little bit dumb and, and do that might be a little bit dumb, God. Forgive us, redeem us, Set us upon our way that we may uh, truly be your children, enlivened by your grace. Lord, as we gather here, so much to be thankful for. We give you thanks for the families that, that uh, baptized their children yesterday evening and for, and for Randy, who uh, was baptized as a believer, Lord God. We just give you thanks and praise for, for inviting these uh, new children uh, into your holy body of Christ. For that, we give you eternal thanks and praise. Lord God, we, we thank you for the privilege of serving you. We, Lord, we just give you so much thanks, but in the midst of our thanks, there are many concerns that, that weigh heavy uh, upon our thoughts and deep within our souls, Lord God. We lift your world up to your never-failing uh, grace, uh, a world that is uh, besieged by natural disasters and disasters of human origin, Lord God. We just pray that you would intercede in those places where, where your word is, uh, is paramount uh, for, towards healing. Lord God, we pray for our great nation. 
We pray for our leaders. Lord, we pray for our communities, our schools, administrators, support staff, teachers. We pray for our children. Keep them safe from harm, Lord God, and open our minds to the wisdom that, uh, uh, that they will be learning uh, through their education in school. Lord God, we pray for those who are returning back to school, back to college, and we pray for those who are vacationing or on the road, Lord God, travel blessings upon them. Lord, we, we pray for those who are hospitalized. We pray for those who are recovering from surgeries and anticipating surgeries and procedures in the upcoming days and, and weeks, Lord God. And we also pray for those who have lost uh, loved ones this day. And this day, we especially pray for the family and friends of Dylan Starkweather and the family and friends of Offsander, Lord God. May their grief and mourning turn to joy with certain hope of everlasting life for the ones they have lost. Lord, uh, we also pray for, for Calvin and Stephen and Sally, for Karen and Pauline and Joyce, for Edith and Alice and Jeff, for Suzanne and Ken, for Karen, for Jim, for Jane and May and Wendy and Ron, for June, for Landry, and for all those folks who surround each and every one of these folks, Lord, uh, with love and care seven days a week, 24 hours a day. They're caregivers, Lord God. Give them courage, uh, give them strength, and offer them wisdom for their days. And the medical community as well, may they use the, the gifts you have given them uh, to, to heal these folks, Lord God. And, and we do pray that your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one that they may be healed in body and in spirit. Now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you have begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Are there children here this morning? Come forward for a children's chat. Okay. All right. We'll move on closer to perfection. When I read the psalm uh, last night or this week that I was going to read, I thought it was a beautiful psalm. And um, this morning when I came in, uh, Tom said the very same thing. It is a beautiful psalm. This is uh, Psalm 27, and I'm going to be reading the first four verses shows us if we trust in the Lord, he'll take care of us. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his, these words. And now if you'll get ready, your, the ushers are coming to take your tithes and offerings.
Lord Jesus, thank you for the privilege of serving you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of coming to your house this day. Thank you, Lord God, for the privilege and the honor of offering these gifts now before you. Bless them and multiply them to your ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Just a, a real quick note, you know, when we do things like these, it's, of course, the vocalist, but Judy puts in all the time as an organist and a pianist for the church, and we do something like this, she puts in extra time, so I think we owe her a gratitude right now before you even do that. <clears throat> She'll kill me later. How great the love, how great the love of the Father, calling us all, calling us all his own. Children of God, born not of flesh, but of spirit. And what shall be in time, I know that he will make known. And someday I'll see him as he is, and I know that I, I shall be like him. Someday the kingdom that is his, someday his kingdom will be my home. This world's insanity has no hold on me. I have his promise, I have eternity, and all because of his love for me. How great the love, how great the love. Love so complete, it fills and it overflows. Not just in time, but for eternity. Above and beyond any love that this world can show. His love is pure, it will endure. How great the love, how great the love, how great the love. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> Let us go to God in prayer. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit that as this scripture is read and proclaimed that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and the salvation of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. The gospel lesson this morning is from St. Matthew's Gospel, the 14th chapter, beginning in the 22nd verse. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, 
Jesus reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Have you ever felt like this? Have you ever wanted to say, Lord, I'm praying now. Listen to me. Listen to me, God. I am praying now because guess what? I'm not getting too much of a response from you. Have you ever felt like that? That you just seem like you're praying to the wall or you're praying to a tree or something, something like that? Wouldn't it be nice on times like that that a big old hand would come down from the sky or a voice for that matter and give us comfort? Give me a sign, God. I'm here praying. Or how about this? This might be a little bit more common. Maybe we won't admit it. But we can get ourselves out of this pickle. We can do it alone. We don't need anybody else. Don't mind me. I'm not going to ask for help. Not from you. Especially not from God. Except, when everything goes in the wrong direction, then we will demand that God help us, right? And then there's other times. There's other times when, well, we just don't want to get out of bed. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like you, you look outside and it might still be dark and you just don't want to take the covers off? You have that perfect pillow position. You ever have that? Where it just kind of sucks in there and everything. You don't want to move because if you move, then everything's going to change a little bit. It feels good. It's comfortable. We want to stay in the proverbial boat where it is safe. We want to keep things the same. We want to have calm seas. We want to maintain the status quo. We want a safety net. And that safety net could be our bed. It could be our home, our car, our church, or just the sameness of no change. An even keel. You know what happens if you're a sailor and you have an even keel? Nothing. Because that means you're not going one way or the other. You're just sitting in the water. According to Scripture, disciples were scared. I got a little taste of that several years ago. We were going across in Dusky Bay in a little boat, a little bigger than this. Then all of a sudden the winds kicked up. If you're, if you're a boater in Lake Erie, it's called Lake Erie Chop. And the boat was tossing and turning, and I knew it was a, it was a good captain and everything, and I knew he was going, but I had the, in, in, my, in my mind a visualization of Gilligan's Island, a three-hour tour. We're going to end up somewhere else. And it was just, we were out of control. The boat was out of control, and the waves were tossing us there, tossing us here. I wasn't sure what to do. So I stood there in fear, sat there in fear. Imagine the disciples in the same way. And then seeing Jesus walking on the water, thinking he was a ghost. In other words, they said, we're already dead. <laughs> We've seen Jesus. Till he said, don't worry, it's me. And then Peter raises his hand and says, I don't believe you. If you are Jesus, command me to come out and I'll be walking on the water. And guess what? Jesus says, okay. Go out in the water. And he did. He stepped out of the boat 
And for the longest time, he was on the surface. And he said, this is pretty good. Time is, this is a really good time. And all of a sudden, the old Lake Erie chop kicked up. He started sinking. He said, I can't do this anymore, Lord. Jesus, help me. Well, Jesus said, oh, Peter, come on. I'm here with you. You thought you were doing this by yourself, didn't you? Kind of happens with us in the church every once in a while, doesn't it? We step out. Time is great. When you first hear the tinge of faith, the word of God, you feel good. There's a study out there recently that said that the happiest people on the earth are folks that are part of a church on a regular basis. I believe that. Because it's a good time. It's a hoot. It's fun. And when the Holy Spirit hits us, it's even better. Church folk call that um, a mountaintop experience. I might say it's the warm and fuzzies. When everything just kind of goes smooth and everything is going great. And that's the way things usually are. I'd have to confess that usually things are going okay. But when reality strikes, then what? Saints, I stand before you and say something we already know. Life can be a risky business. We can choose to stay safe. Or we can choose to take a risk. Sometimes the market loses value. That's a risk. Sometimes it goes the other way. It will, by the way. Last week we were at our son's graduation in Newport, Rhode Island, and an admiral was talking about leadership. And he was going on and on, and it's pretty, pretty typical fare, but he said, you know, a leader is somebody a little bit different. A leader takes a risk. A manager mitigates the risk. See, if all we do is manage our life as a manager would, we want to make sure everything goes nice and smooth. We want to make sure everybody has the right communications and there's not a whole lot of change because if there's a whole lot of change, then the, the waves start kicking up just like they did on Lake Erie for me or, 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 or with the disciples. But a leader takes a risk. Sometimes, all the time, if you want to get something done, you have to take a risk. Risk is imperative. You've got to step out of the boat. Now, you don't have to take a risk like jumping out of an airplane. You don't have to take a risk like climbing a sheer cliff without a safety rope. You don't have to take a risk like not wearing your seatbelt in the car. But we need to all take a risk by stepping out of our comfort zone once in a while. Faith takes us in that direction. Faith takes us out of our comfort zone because what faith is doing is, faith is saying we need to offer grace to everybody. All means all. Two greatest commandments, you hear it every other Sunday. Love God, love neighbor, guess what? That takes a risk. You take a risk in loving somebody that you don't know. Sometimes you take a risk in loving God if you're not sure about the direction God has taken you. 
Love is a risky business. Loving God and loving neighbor necessarily calls us to take a risk. There's a story about a man who didn't want to worry about risk. He never dated anybody because you know what happens when you break up? Your heart breaks. Never got a dog. There are no kids in here. Dogs do die. Never had a dog because it hurts too much to let them go. Never did mission because he didn't want to get his hands dirty. Never volunteered for anything or volunteered for a leadership position in the church well because I might make a mistake. Might do something wrong. People might not like me as much. Man dies. Goes to the pearly gates. St. Peter comes up in a golf cart to pick him up to go see God. They go to God. He, sits, he stands before God, describes his life, lays everything out. God, here is my life. To which God responded, what life? You see, saints, God wants us to not only live, but to live life in abundance. To step out of the boat. But guess what? We're not alone. Because when we step in, out on the boat in faith, what we are saying is that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will guide us, will lead us, will give us the wisdom, will give us the strength, will give us the words, will give us everything that we need. That's what it is to step out of the boat. If we don't step out of the boat, you know what happens? Nothing. If all we want to do is maintain the status quo so we're comfortable, guess what? I'll say not only nothing happens, but it goes in the other direction. And we don't take a risk. We risk dying on the vine. Did you know God took a risk? Did you know that God put us sinners in charge of the most important institution in the universe? Remember the preaching two weeks ago when Peter was given the keys to the kingdom? We're all Peters, you know. We're all having given the keys to the kingdom. We're all sinners, right? God took a risk. God took a risk that we sinners, empowered by the Holy Spirit, will turn to God and say, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Redeem me. Set me free. That I may be part of this holy body of Christ, which is the church. Oh, God took a chance on us. God took a chance on us. Way back in Jesus' time. Look who Jesus chose to be disciples. I hate to say it, but they're all bums. Said that once several years ago, and a group of people took exception to that. How dare you call the disciples of Jesus bums? Well, they were. Christmas time. According to the Gospel of Luke, who brought the message? The shepherds. Who were the shepherds? The shepherds were bums. They were worse than the fishermen. No offense. Fishermen. <laughs> Jesus took a chance on them. Jesus took a chance on Mary and the Magdalene. God took a chance on Paul who persecuted the church, who was a murderer. God took a chance on Moses, 
who was a murderer. God takes all kinds of chances. King David. Don't have time to go through King David's background because you want to get the donuts at 10 o'clock. God took a chance. God took a chance. God took a risk. Because all those people and all of us are open to God's redeeming grace. Open to the opportunity to do it right again. As a church, we need to take a risk once in a while. Maybe more than we do. We took a risk in doing the Saturday evening service. We ended up with more than 100 folk praising God. Nordstrom's. You know that store nowhere you can afford to buy anything in? Has a very simple employee notebook and orientation class for all their managers. All they say is, I want you as managers to make good decisions. I just want you to make good decisions. Nordstrom's a pretty good company. You know, in the midst of all the stuff that went through the market last week, Nordstrom's didn't drop that much. They took a risk. They, took, they take a risk on their people make good decisions. God has, takes a risk on us. That we will step out of the boat in faith. And we got to take that first step, saints. We got to step out of the boat. We got to get out of our comfort zone. We got to just do it. And this is the place to start. This is the training ground. We have all these opportunities for mission and ministry here at the church. If you haven't tried one, try it. We all have all these committees and stuff to do God's work. Give it a try. We are going to New Jersey June 26th to July 2nd go on mission. Now there's one for you. I had somebody five years ago here say, I'm I'm afraid to go on the mission because I don't know if I can do it. To that, said, try it. They haven't missed one since. God will empower you. If you're doing God's work, God will empower you. God will take a risk on you. All we have to do is take a risk on God and step out of the boat. You want to see what the mission trip's all about? Let me know. June 26th to July 2nd. It's already there. They're waiting for us. We've been there before. They know who we are. A lot of work to do. Take a risk. Step out of the boat. Guarantee you, you go on mission one time. You'll keep stepping out of that boat over and over and over and over and over again because you will know God's love in your life. Even more than you do now. But you don't have to go all the way to New Jersey. You can do it here. You can go to Brookside. You can, you can go to Community Care in North Ridgeville. You can help with the youth. You can help with the children. You can serve on the trustees or the finance. You can do all that stuff. And God's not going to put up with us saying, I can't do it. Because God's going to say, I took a risk on you. I gave you the gifts. I'll tell you what they are. Just step out of the boat. 
Just step out of the boat. And just as Peter tempted God, I think God wants us to do the same. God, if this is what you want me to do, I will step out of the boat. But I'm also not going to be so stupid that I can't do it on my own, that I think I can do it on my own. I need you, Lord. Stepping out in faith also means confession. That's what Peter did. Lord, I'm sinking. I can't do it. We need to do the same thing. Lord, I'm sinking. I can't do it. I can't do what you're calling me to do. I can't do it alone. God calls us to take a risk, to step out of the boat, to take our guard down, to take our self-centeredness, and that's not always a bad thing because sometimes we're self-centered because we're scared to take that risk. We need help, ask. When you ask somebody else for help, do you realize what you're doing for them? You are giving them an incredible gift to allow them the privilege of helping you, of reaching out their hand in Christian love to you. Saints, that's what it's all about. So as we leave this place, let us consider stepping out of the boat taking a risk where God has taken a risk on us and blessed us as a result. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for your trust in us. Help us to trust you even more completely. Trust us to know that we have victory in you. Help us to have this assurance as we step out in faith that when we fall, and we certainly will once or twice, that we know that you are standing in the gap for us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us stand and sing our hymn of imitation, Victory in Jesus.
Now may the love of God, the peace and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all now, even to the end of the age. Let the people of God say, Amen.